Video games are super fun and super expensive. And once you bust open that plastic, you're stuck with them. That's why Redbox lets you try out the hottest new games risk-free. Right now, you can rent Assassin's Creed Origins, Wolfenstein 2, WWE 2K18, and more. Text CRUCIBLE to 727272 for a free one-night game rental. Redbox, a smarter way to watch and play offer, expires December 31st, 2016, subject to additional terms, charges apply for additional nights, payment card required. If you're not in Text Club, Redbox will send you an additional text with an invite to join the recurring alerts. Message and data rates may apply. For terms, visit www.redbox.com slash text club. And for the privacy policy, redbox.com slash privacy. Oh, hey, Swain. Hi. You, uh, you ready to record this thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just waiting for Bones to get online. Oh, oh, it's Halloween this week. Oh. I hope, I hope he's not doing another one of those weird Halloween intros. Yeah, like the creepy rhyme stuff from yeah, last year. The, the the dramatic poem, and then Andrew just went like all Megadeth Haunted Mansion with the music. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a lot. We should probably just keep it real simple this time. I, yeah, it, it's, don't overdo it. it. It was, it was a bit much. Simple is good. Yeah, all right. There's oh. the, there's the ah. spooky music. God damn it. Welcome to the podcast for all things PvP. Destiny is now on console and PC. Swain Birds and Bones are here to chat to help you get better at making brains splat. Now settle on in. Let's help you survive. In the crucible, that is. No time for the hive. With a show for you if you're often dead. So listen up now. It's time for Andrew to shred. Last life. This is it. You annihilated them. Good. (laughs) (laughs) To shred. (laughs) I got to tell you, I was not on board with this, but now that we're on the other side, glad you went there. (laughs) I I genuinely enjoyed that. (laughs) You must have been working on that for weeks. I'm guessing. Yes. Way, way in advance. I actually right after the last weeks in the making. Right, right, right. Right after last Halloween, I just uh, went right back at it. Me and Andrew kind of teamed up on it. We've uh, been passing back samples back and forth. So I, I really like how it how it came out. I mean, just these bars, Swain, Birds, and Bones are here to chat to help <laughs> you get better one. at making brains <laughs> splat. Come on, this is inspired. Birds, I personally enjoyed your ASMR reading of our pre-roll today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I did not take a... Deep enough breath before embarking on that one. Andrew, I, I hope you do speed that up 100% so it's not only <laughs> quiet but extremely fast. Oh, I can't wait to listen to you sped up in 1.5 speed on my yep. podcast app. It's going yep. to be interesting. It's going to be good. Welcome to Crucible Radio, the podcast for all things Destiny 2 PvP. Both on, on console, console and, and PC. PC. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anybody out there that just picked up Destiny 2 for PC and they're enjoying the hell out of it and they're like, oh, I'm going to you know, pull up my iTunes. Is there any podcasts that do this thing? Welcome. We, uh, we talk about PvP. We also make corny intro bits. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you're a console player that just upgraded and you're playing with some new PC buddies that you've never played Destiny with before, send them our way. We can help them out. Learn, yeah. learn how uh, control works so that you don't all stand on the point, which happened a lot this week. I don't blame yeah. anyone. Go back a few weeks to the Iron Banner episode. Uh, we got a little <laughs> hot takey. <laughs> oh, oh my. It all still applies. All right. Well, we, we need to just talk about D2PC. There's a lot to be said. It is everything console is. But it's some other stuff too, and you know we're going to get into it. But we do have some news it's to discuss news this heavy week. week. It's, an, wow. it's a news, a newsish week. A lot going on this week. 
extra, yeah. extra. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, normally the news doesn't always touch on something we can cover, but this kind of had so much going on. This time um, we were in it. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> TwitchCon uh, was this past weekend, and uh, that was, uh, we we didn't expect this, but Bungie uh, shouted us out. Got a little bit of shout out. Um, yeah, during the big stream to reveal all of uh, the new gear and stuff or at least some of it, uh, that's coming in the new Seasons system. Uh, Deej might have mentioned, you might have heard, that in the future on Crucible Radio, we'll be joined by uh, two of our buddies from Bungie to talk about Destiny 2. Yeah, let me let me set the scene, because as you mentioned, we, we were not expecting this. I was in Lincoln, Nebraska. I was in an all-day <laughs> training session We had a five-minute break, and so I pull out my phone and pull up the old internet Discord chat functionality and see I've missed a lot of messages because, um, yeah, we just got got blown up. Um, Are we ready to to announce who our guests are going to be and and what we might be talking about with our Bungie exclusive? Who do we got? Yeah. So uh, we're going to be bringing on Noosk, returning to the shoe to the show to talk about guns, armor, and uh, some sandy sandbox stuff. Yeah, and if you don't know of him, John Wisniewski makes your guns feel and sound good. Like, literally down to the way your camera shakes when you shoot a scout rifle. It's fascinating stuff, so he's going to talk more about that. You know how you can can play in the Crucible and you can use more than three guns? In fact, you can use pretty much all of them. Impressive task. Uh, That's what he does. (laughs) They are balancing their tweaking their figuring out time to kills and body shot versus crit multipliers and zoom percentages and perk loadouts and all all of that. Uh, so he's going to talk to that. But additionally, <gasps> new to Crucible Radio, I believe a fan of the show, and finally gets to tell us how it is Mr. Uh, Mr. Claude Jerome is going to be joining us. What's he going to talk to us about? Well, if you don't know who Claude is, then you better know. Actually, he, um, when Taken King was launching and we found out, hey, we are getting ourselves a third subclass. Uh, and we had a grand presentation outlining the new subclasses and the design philosophy behind them. That was Mr. Claude Jerome giving that presentation. He is the subclass expert. Ooh. And he's going to break it down for us. Yeah, I actually got an opportunity to hang with him a little bit E uh, E3. And uh, this is when we just found out about Arc Strider and saw it in action. And uh, we were just like both so excited about the new stuff. And I could tell he was like so thrilled to just have new things happen. And, you know, there's some crazy interactions that we have now in Destiny 2 that I find to be really awesome and gameplay defining that he had a part in. So I'm super, super excited to dig into that stuff. Yeah, I definitely want to find out like how they were able to take something so like that they were able to simplify in the subclasses, but still make them so dynamic and fun to play. I mean, if you, if you tuned in last week, you heard Swain breaking it down with the sunbreaker. And also (laughs) we talked about night stalker with Ramblin and just like, whatever you think we figured out about the meta, there's still more to pick out of these subclasses. There's a lot more that than meets the eye. So uh, maybe, maybe we'll find out something new or find out something we're even still sleeping on. Uh, But you'll just have to wait and find out. We're going to have to wait and find out until we get to talk to them. Yeah, so stay tuned. It'll be right here in your feed. Please subscribe. That's the easiest way to get it. Or, you know, just look it up when it comes out. I don't care. Uh, (laughs) The rest of the Twitch stream was uh, great. If you're looking for stuff to grind for, there's some new gear. Uh, The dawning is coming back. That stuff looked very clean, very fresh. And uh, seasons will really kind of impact the way everything happens moving forward, uh, including Very, when we get sort of big upgrades or sh- or sandbox changes and stuff that's going to come with the seasons, which I think is great. I'm going to take the bird stance on Iron Banner and apply it to the dawning. I don't really like the dawning gear. Just my opinion. I'm glad you're doing it because I got to <laughs> admit, I kind of like it. I kinda, well, we almost like, like kicked you off the show, Birds, for disliking <laughs> Iron Banner. So, Swain, I think you're supposed to get heat right now, but yeah. whatever. Get out. Have your own opinions. No, I, I, I have to I'll say I'll leave, this. but I'm taking the podcast with me. <laughs> oh, no, don't come back. I didn't realize that's how it worked. No, I have to say, 
Um, this this new and like, oh my god, we're getting new refreshed banner gear already. Um, this new banner gear, granted, I haven't seen the whole thing. I don't know how many logos are on it, but uh, <laughs> this is this is to my liking. This is a little more understated. I appreciate it. The one I like it most about about like the quick changing of gear sets is that like it feels overwatchy to me. And I'll put a dollar in the jar, but still, I like the ability that this is gonna go away it's like quickly. Like it comes with the events and the yep. seasons, mm-hmm. and then it's gone. And you can't get it again. And it's like, oh, awesome. Like you can wear that gear, you know, two months, four months, a year down the road and be like, hey, I took part in the first Iron Man. And I'll be like, oh, yeah. that's so cool. You got a full set. Anyway, it gives it a little bit more um, like your ability to grind for like the full set now makes sense because the seasons are shorter. It's just the idea of seasons in general. I mean, I work for a publicly traded company. I live and die by quarters. But that idea that like, we, you know, we got a lot of balance patches in D2 and I mean, go back and listen to the old news interviews. Like it took them a while to figure it out. They didn't want to make big changes. They were still figuring out, you know, what impact changes to the sandbox are going to have and and having fewer sort of gears and knobs and dials to adjust to sort of get things dialed in. And it's clear like this this was planned like it seemed like this was really fast but like it's from the get-go like they have a sort of a a tempo of once a quarter we're gonna get new balance patch new cosmetics some new gear new events but there was this quote from twitchcon where they say that new seasons will also change the themes of the player experience i imagine that extends to the sandbox too which i kind of i kind of like like the it, it makes me i think appreciate sort of the current balance, the current quote unquote meta guns and just be able to sort of enjoy them and use them knowing that they're probably going to shift a bit with the next balance patch or the next sort of big season reset patch. Um, and that probably something else will bubble up to the top. Um, but you know how long it's going to be until it, it changes again. You know, you can sort of, you got some expectations now. Um, I like it. Also, the clans reset. I have no idea what that means or what that does. I just get my engrams for free every week. Something. But, uh, <laughs> something. Yeah, you get like a new, fancy new stick or something. I don't know. You hear that, Bird's Monarchy people? He doesn't care. Comes it's, to sway in orbit. It's not, it's he just wants you for your care. engrams. It's that I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand what the stick is for. <laughs> Anyway, that'll all reset. We'll have things to grind for, new perks, new gear, new cool stuff, new emotes, all that will be coming up. But the bigger thing was oh, yeah. this week in the tw- This week in the This Week at Bungie. <laughs> don't, don't think about the, it too much. It's, it's like ATM <laughs> machine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, well, holy cow. I didn't think this was going to hit us with uh, with so much stuff. And none of it is, uh, you know, on your PS4 right now. But at least we get uh, a little bit more concrete things to look forward to. And it's like there's something stuff to that be said about to like there's something to be said about like knowing something's coming. And then it like kind of like you're like, oh, OK, it's easier for the wait mm-hmm. other than like, oh, when's it coming? When's it coming? We're getting some when's it coming? We know. We know exactly what we're getting, and we have an idea of when it's coming. Well, and not only does this stuff pertain to endgame, blah, 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 but it's also sort of setting uh, more foundation for the way things can work and keeping those uh, those activities while you're playing them uh, better, more interesting, more engaging, less about just what drops at the end of it. Uh, there's some really big changes to Crucible scoring, which we're going to go over, but stuff like... You know, uh, I'm just going to jump out and read my favorite part of this whole blog post is penalties for quitting competitive games. Oh, Oh my. my. You you don't just get to bail on your teammates because you're not having fun. Uh, Love it. And uh, (sighs) stuff like that is just great, great foundation, great quality. I wonder if that'll extend to Iron Banner. Well, it's competitive. I assume they mean in the in the competitive playlist. And we know that Iron Banner functions off of. Uh, the quick play settings. Mm. So I wouldn't get my hopes up, but it does possibly hint at that was my uh, least favorite part of iron better. was just people yeah. leaving. It was like, Oh yeah. I already this, ran about this. I don't need to rant about it again. 
this maybe leads us towards these this foundations and the stuff we need for a real strong competitive scene. Uh, another thing that leads to that is uh, their goal to uh, get private matches for the competitive community yeah, into the boy-o. game. They're targeting early 2018. It's going to be a nice little belated Christmas present, I hope. And uh, you know we're going to enjoy that. I mean, that that is that is a shot in the arm for so many things. I mean, some people did not play any private matches in D1, and that is totally fine. Um, Some like 3%, right? Yeah, right? (laughs) Not not, not all that much. You'd think it'd be a little bit more. Um, But that's just, there's so many things you can do with a private match. I mean, we don't know what the extent of it's going to be, if it's going to sort of have the same options as D1, or it'll be a little more customizable. Um, but of course, this opens up the world of playing against your friends, whether you're playing serious matches or you're doing what what I usually did in private matches, which is like, let's turn off the HUD and play Rift with different color team shaders or whatever. Um, <laughs> you get your goofing around. You can play fun games. Um, I know Mr. Fallout Plays is going to be thrilled that he doesn't have to uh, doesn't have to trouble matchmake to try and get enough footage to do all of his crucible science. He was matchmaking. He was trying to find people in Australia the other day. <laughs> so he, two Australian people can matchmake together easier than someone in the U.S. What a world. Um, and of course, this this um, opens the door for the competitive scene to reemerge. And, and the competitive scene didn't go anywhere. People are holding tournaments and they're competing against each other. But it has all of the struggle of the early matchmaking of D1. Um, now we can have tournaments hey. now we can have a sweat ladder oh man that's that's exciting even if you don't participate i know tournaments coming back like i'm not gonna compete in a tournament but i just like watching i them. like watching them i loved watching the guardian con tournament last year and speaking of that it's gonna be coming back they were talking about it on twitter today with a two hundred fifty thousand dollar charity pot which what? is going to be awesome. That's a lot of what? money. <laughs> we like we were we were busting a seam last year for raising what was it like 120k or something for charity uh, at the last Guardian Con to just like straight up double that and then some and do it in the spirit of friendly competition um, and get to watch a sweet S tournament with a bunch of great players. That's not pretty cool. Not pretty cool. We'll probably be on PC too. PC. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> It's going to look so oh. good. Okay. Not yet. Not Almost yet. Almost there. Almost there. Uh. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> so th- there's like a bunch of, there's a bunch of other stuff um, that they mentioned. Not all of it is, is relevant to this show, but there's a lot just, of like, it's some- like, just if you've been paying attention to what people have been upset about or have been expressing concerns over, they're pretty much touching on it all. Yeah. They're sort of just going down the wish list. Um, I, I know there's a couple things in here. I'm excited for, um, and we've got a balance patch coming out next week. We should talk at least a little bit about that. Um, but there are changes to, okay, first of all, there are changes to emotes. So you have an emote menu and you can have four emotes there. Quality. Mm, wow. Quality. Emote wheel. Missed, missed that. Got real used to that in like, I don't know, some other game. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Not important. Dollar in the jar. <laughs> um, Dollar but, in the division uh, jar, birds. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Um <laughs> It's but, just a really dusty dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he needs a buddy to keep him company. Um, but in addition to that, uh, and I okay, changes to make the mod economy more interesting and impactful. This one is particularly appealing to me. I personally like the mod system. It is a great way to get rid of any and all extra glimmer that you have. So <laughs> there's there's that. Um, but I'm I'm curious to see the impactful side of it. Are we going to see new mods emerging? Is, is, is there going to be a increased depth to the mod meta? I mean, just hearing Ramblin talk about it, you realize there's already a lot more there going on, but I just love that min maxing. I love the yeah. gun customization. They kind of took the min maxing out of the armor sets. Like as far as the, like, Oh, I've got to find this piece of armor. And it's only got 83%, but I need a hundred percent. They took that out and just like threw it into mods and if they can expand on that a little bit more and make it a little bit more in depth it'll make 
the gr- like that grind for the perfect set with the perfect little you know mod set up it's going to be fun it'll be the same grind as like when you're looking for like tier 12 in destiny one I'm kind of curious if I'm making it doing a little speculation here, if they uh, if they maybe move towards the system they've used for perks where a perk does something on your gun that's good in uh, trade off for doing something you might not want. uh, And then you get to decide if it's worth it, you know, more stability for less range, et cetera. Uh, So I think it'd be cool because it's an opportunity to keep pushing towards those different play styles. So maybe these mods are more or less about like, oh, no, that doesn't hurt obviously just put those all on your gear great that's now a better set of armor and maybe think like wow this set of armor means i have to adjust and play a certain different way uh it could be hugely beneficial but i gotta pull it off and so that's exciting i just like mods um and then we got this balance patch um and this is not like weapon balance this is specifically around uh, the game types and and mostly score limits. Like, oh, it changed to mercy, but I mean, hopefully that's not coming into play for you too much. Um, a lot of these, like, okay, so like a clash change, like, I guess I don't, that doesn't really register for me. Like, okay, the game ends because we got more kills versus the game ends because we had more kills when time ran out. It's, okay, maybe fewer games will go to the time limit. Um, but the I think there's two that are interesting, and one in particular, uh, mm-hmm. the supremacy change now grants one point for defeating an enemy guardian. And this makes me wonder if people will start to play supremacy in the same way that people who like to frustrate me play control, which is pretend that it's clash because you're getting something for killing people, but not like worry about going to stand on the thing or get the point. I'm not bitter. pick up the thing or pick up the thing. Yeah. It's just, no, it's like, let's got 10 kills. I don't, I don't need 10 extra points for that. Come on. Hmm. Ah, basically we'll you just let the other person pick up and you negate the one point you got for the kill. It's not smart. I You're think basic. I, th- I think the concern of supremacy has been a little misplaced lately because I don't know if it, if it has mattered, but I think the perception or the option to uh, score more, more points doing more things adds an element to it that I think is really good. Um, you know, in its current state, it's like, so what if the game goes to 25 versus 24? It's still like a competition to win. It's not like it very much goes in one direction or the other. But now we have uh, the opportunity for a slayer who can really pick people off, really move around, but isn't so much getting that sort of like huge team support to go secure the crests. They can make a strong impact on the game or a team can really stick together and uh, and use those those game swaying team fight wins to go get three or four crests and, and just basically get like a, a treasure for their, uh, for their win in that little engagement and stuff. So I hope it allows uh, different dynamics in the game, which will make it more fun. I think that's a good, a good change. I uh, control going to 90 is going to bug me just cause 90 to me doesn't <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's not a number. <laughs> a round number. Uh, but uh, it was, it was a little long getting to a hundred. I understand, but I'm like, really? Okay. 90. Fine. The thing with a, like that small change though, is that like it takes away the chance that like, it gives even less of a chance that you get a second super in that game. So true. True. You could like it just helps you plan better. Like, Oh, you just plan to just have the one. And I do think that uh, those kind of games though, when I'm getting like two supers, especially if I was scoring a hundred points in control during iron banner, it was a stomp. I mean, cause sure. you have to like really be taking advantage of zone advantage and like power plays to get to that many points. Or you have to be the, the only slayer on your team and everybody else has got no thumbs. Right. So it's less about like, Oh no, I can't get my second super that could help me win the game. And more about like that second super is now just used to taunt some guy with your second Nova bomb. (laughs) Like it's not like really game deciding by the time you get it, but it is nice to just really truly go off on a team and get that second and, and keep it going. So we'll see. I don't have any kind of feelings on survival. I guess like there's the quality of life sort of aspect of it, of, you know, like when survival is in trials, it's not going to just go to the clock hard every time um, or not going to go to the clock a lot of the time, sort of depending on what style teams are playing. Um, but like overall, I guess I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really feel one way. I, I, I sort of like the, the tempo of a timer to sort of motivate 
you know, making a play or making a positioning change or taking a risk or not taking a risk and like being able to run out the clock more strategically if you have an advantage. But uh, good, bad, I, I don't know. I guess I have a short attention span, so less is better, but <laughs> hard to say. I think uh, I think I definitely noticed it in trials when I just play survival, I'm like, okay, this game's kind of more intense. I love when, when those games get, get real, real close and down to the wire. But I was like, we, we did like a late night trials run on a Monday and it was the weekend of survival. And it was like, I just got home. So it was the only time I got to play and we play like three games. I was like, okay, we're going to be up late if we actually win the next ones. And it was like, that's a long, long time to play, to go flawless. You just have to be on it for that much longer. And we talk about, you know, fatigue in gaming all the time. I'm like, yeah, that's me. I'm my wrist cert guys. Uh, So if that makes that sort of experience, okay. I, uh, as long as the, as long as the balance of the, the, the moments and it's still possible to have comebacks and blah, blah, blah. As long as that's okay then I'll be okay with it. But I'm interested to see how that plays out. Yeah, I want to definitely see the uh, the way it plays out first because I, I enjoyed I enjoyed the way it played. So we'll see. Okay. Are we ready to talk about... Oh, I'm, I'm so ready to talk about PC. I've got a lot of... Um, spoiler alert, a lot of good things to say about PC. Before we do that... You know we've got to give a big thank you to our sponsor who keeps this show running and on many occasions has fed me delicious dinners. Ooh, transitions. Thank you so much to our sponsor this week, HelloFresh. 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 Now, (laughs) all right, all right. HelloFresh, if you're not familiar, it's the way to go. It is a meal kit delivery service. They shop for you. They plan out the meals and they deliver your favorite step-by-step recipes with pre-measured ingredients. So all you have to do is cook, eat, and enjoy. It's so it's so straightforward. I you know, we cook a lot, we do a lot of grocery trips, but to have all the ingredients you need in exactly the right amount delivered right to your door in their crazy insulated box with ice packs and mind you entirely recyclable but to have everything come pre-measured like I last night I was I asked you Janie what are we going to do with all this green onion the clock is ticking on this green onion let's just put a lot of green onion on everything because that's what happens you go to the store you buy one which is a whole bunch and then you're you use a third of it in your recipe and you're sitting looking at it they make it so easy because you get the exact amount you need to make a delicious delicious meal. And HelloFresh offers a wide variety of chef curated recipes that change weekly, including like a regular classic plan, which comes a wide variety of meat, fish and seasonal produce and a veggie plan. That's great for vegetarian recipes and plant based proteins. Uh, And they even have a family plan, which is just good for quick and easy meals for a family on the go that they'll all love. You can choose the delivery day that works best for your busy schedule and even pause your account, you know, going out of town, whatever. You can pause it for weeks at a time. So a few things about me. I'm both lazy and an idiot. And (laughs) just where (laughs) with HelloFresh, these meals take 30 minutes to prepare. They give you the individual things that you just put it in. You understand and there's there's incredibly clear uh, menus with visuals and everything like that. And then minimal cleanup. Another thing I hate to do, clean the kitchen. It's like, boom, you're done. Everything just happens. And I'm getting to try stuff that I wouldn't actually find or understand at the store. It's great. Especially as a chef, I love the I love this idea because it's teaching people how to be better at home. cooking. Yeah, very true have the right amount of food, have it all ready to go, have everything where you need it. And have you keep your, the recipes afterwards. You're like, oh, great. Now I know how to make this. The very first HelloFresh meal I ever made was their poblano chili. And I legit make a batch of it like once every week or so. And I can make it in my sleep now. I know exactly how to do it. It is, uh, it is the recipe that keeps on giving. It's so good. It's so good. So listeners, for $30 off your first week of HelloFresh, visit HelloFresh.com and enter the promo code CRUCIBLE30, C-R-U-C-I-B-L-E-3-0. But HelloFresh doesn't recommend that you cook sleepwalking. That's a dangerous thing that birds does. Don't try it. 
do what now? You you said you could make the poblano in your sleep, and and that's a oh. terrible suggestion. People will burn themselves, surely. That's that's true. <laughs> I guess I wouldn't know if I was doing sleep cooking because I would be asleep. <laughs> And the cleanup is so easy. Wake up and there's chili. <laughs> the cleanup is so easy. <laughs> you don't even know you made anything. All I thought was, man, how am I so full of chili this morning? That's weird. <laughs> I woke up full. <laughs> All right. HelloFresh.com. Offer code Crucible30. Check it out. Guys. 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 Right. Guys. Before we <gasps> freak out here, oh, oh God. I, I don't want okay. anybody to feel like we're like, bashing consoles in any way. Nope. I just want them to think that this is a lot of people got a really cool, shiny brand new toy this week and you shouldn't be upset that they got that toy. And we're going to talk about that toy and how cool it looks, but we're still console peeps at heart. We love you guys. And now continue gushing. I want to also give like, a general word of uh, of reassurement, reassuringness, reassurance. Uh, but let's go with whatever ridiculous thing you said. <laughs> yeah, okay. those, one of those. Uh, this show is about getting reassurementarium. This show is about getting better at the crucible, and those are things that we do no matter what, and exclusive of what uh, system we're playing on. So yes, yeah, sometimes our specific, and this is like an advice that you can use on the PC or on the console, and that's just what we'll have to talk about. But you know, it's not one or the other with us. So Crucible Radio is about getting better in the Crucible, no matter how you play it. And uh, and and most of what we do and everything on this show for the last 122 episodes or whatever uh, can be applied to all of it, except for like a few tiny minuscule specifics. You don't even have to worry about it. So let's talk about PC for today. And then it's back to the show as usual, you know? Yep. Look, look, Destiny 2 is Destiny 2. We're all in the same sandbox. And the more people who get to join in, the better this game is going to be. All right, wait, caveats out of the way. We can we can just yeah. go yeah. Oh, my God. I love it. I love it so much. It's so good. Oh. Uh, many of you don't know this, but... Um, uh, a little bit of a personal information about us or one of us on the show is that birds actually just had a corrective eye surgery done because he could only see it 30 frames per second his whole life. <laughs> and uh, he had this surgery done the day before destiny two came out on PC. Yep. So now he can see Involved 60 lasers. frames per second and no more. Yeah. It's uh... his, his now his eyesight is now a locked 60 F- FPS. <laughs> yep. You're going to go to the eye doctor now down. and they're going to be like, this is not like 2020 vision. You got 60 FPS. vision. <laughs> yep. I do have a little frame rate counter in the corner and oh, you get, must drive you, me crazy. You're like Robocop. You get used to it. Yeah. I just, I'm just, I'm Robocop now. That That's it. The um, lamest robot. <laughs> it's so, because he's part person. People are lame. <laughs> Yeah, I you know actually I, I'm agree with that. I'm gonna agree with that. There's like all these crazy robots out there that are not like just waddling around the city arresting people that are doing fun robot stuff. And this guy is just like, all right, I, I got a I got a handgun and I got a thing that can. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, what are we talking about? What are we? Okay, okay. I did not play the D2 PC beta. I oh, have that's had, right. This is your first time. I have had no experience with it except for at the reveal event. I played like the the opening mission um, and I said, oh, my, this is this is nice. This looks very good. I played around with some of the options a little bit. Got a feel for it. But um, I was not really prepared to play through something, especially having played through everything on console, like going through the story mission again, going through the crucible and just feeling feeling how how different the experience is it's the same and it's not i feel like there's the like my aim has changed as like the graphics are very pretty field of view is is a whole thing we should talk about that but there's just something fundamental about the way look works and the way my aim works i feel like i can see with much better clarity what I'm ADSing on like just that window is much clearer. It's easier to adjust for headshots. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like my, my tracking just went up considerably just tied to the graphics alone. I think if we want to jump into like literally the game experience right away, 
and not just that it looks better. I think, uh, I think playing with uh, a mouse and keyboard, but on PC in general, uh, was an exercise in uh, constraint and and carefulness because there is a difference in engagements of how far people will start shooting you and how accurately they can do so. And I can no longer just sort of sprint across the map where, however I want, because you might get picked off by someone with a hand cannon now, or, or just a a very accurate scout rifle. So the accuracy was good because I was like, well, I got to like reel it in here. And especially since my controls aren't perfect right now, I'm still getting used to it. Let's play real careful. Let's play real smart and really focus on not just being a spaz and my own literal physical limitations. When I did play a couple games with mouse and keyboard kept me from being that aggressive in the first place. I'll just say, I'll just say in general, um, the ability to switch back and forth between controller and mouse and keyboard in general. Like I know you guys told me it was well done and I believed you during the beta, but like, well done. Well it's impossible done. to tell. It is impossible. It is It is just instant. Like, I was trying to figure out how to get it going, and I just plugged my controller in, and it was like, oh, I guess, I guess that's, that's it. That's how it works. <laughs> I guess that's how it you, works. No, for, for real, the birds went into the chat. I was like, how do I get this to work? <laughs> yeah, they were like, yeah. literally just plug it in. Yeah. <laughs> it, I, I Maybe I was overthinking a little bit. Um, all right. So I, I grew up playing first person shooters on PC, I feel like I had some mouse and keyboard competence. And of course, when I'm going to boot it up the first time, I'm going to play with mouse and keyboard and get a feel for it. I was hoping some of those skills would translate over a bit better, but I think I was not prepared to play specifically destiny two with a mouse and keyboard. Like destiny two has so much going on. You don't realize it when it's all like condensed into a controller. Yeah. But do you, like the options to do things, there's so many options to be doing things. The, the the movement vocabulary is so big, right? Like in a lot of, I don't know, I just like my hand, if I put my hand on the keyboard, it goes WASD. I've got my pinky on the shift key for sprint. I've got my thumb on the space bar for jump. And then maybe I'll like hit control to crouch. But th- that is the extent of sort of your, what you have to consider with movement And I found it really, really difficult to translate my existing Destiny skill set of like, you know, land, start sprinting, do a slide, Slide, get up in the air. Slide, 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 slide. Yeah, (laughs) so much sliding, but like just the rhythm of like hitting shift key to start sprinting instead of clicking the stick. Or um, I started on on Titan in D2. I've never started with a Titan, got to say. I'm enjoying it. Um, But like taking that and then additionally adding in the mechanic of shoulder charge as a movement ability. So now just like my core movement is not just those things and hitting crouch so much more than I would in other games, but also hitting melee and just not knowing where anything is. I think my aim was better than it was on on controller, especially hip firing. But Mm -hmm. um, my my movement is not there yet. I am struggling a bit, guys. Here's my manifesto here. (laughs) <laughs> I'm never going to be top tier at this game. I know my plateau. I know where it is. And I just want to enjoy playing Destiny at the core of it. I'm not going to play with mouse and keyboard. Ever. I'm going to play with my scuff controller, and that's all I'm going to play with on PC. I refuse. I would like to be a little bit more optimistic that like, I'll just break my controller and be forced to learn mouse and keyboard (laughs) and get good and be able to switch back and forth. But uh, I don't know if I'm deluding myself. I'm with you, man. I gave it a fair shake, but I plugged that controller in and just went, yep. When the, when the (laughs) controller options work so well, so well in D2 PC, I don't see a reason for me to force myself to play keyboard. Yeah. Um, and that's not like, that's not, you know, knocking anybody's abilities. Like by all means, I understand the advantages of mouse and keyboard. My hands just can't do it. (laughs) Um, there's just too much. And this late in my life to be playing, like playing destiny and not be able to do what I previously can do in the console setting 
it's just fr- it's more frustrating than it is fun. Perfectly fair. I was thinking about this, and and this I think told me something interesting about playing Destiny, and and especially in the Crucible, where th- this became most apparent. Playing on mouse and keyboard, I got oh, uh, I I I left my mouse in Lincoln, Nebraska. I left my my heart in San Francisco, but I left my mouse in Lincoln, Nebraska. I I got the what what's the one that Lupo says the the Logitech uh, G what's what's the one you have Bonesy the five five Logitech G five o two five o two that looks ridiculous but is is surprisingly comfortable. It's a gorgeous mouse. It 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 does look silly and high tech gamer e until you get it and you touch it and you're like oh oh uh, nice it, it nice. feels good. Um and like I got. I, I, I was following the Lupo advice. I got DPI dialed in. I got my sensitivity. I tried to like, it's twitchier in general, which I'm not used to. And what I found was like, okay, my aim is better with the mouse. Just straight up, it is easier for me to point and click at people's heads than to like steer my gun towards it with a joystick. But my movement with mouse and keyboard is middling at best where it's it's pretty good on controller and i realized that that was sort of the choice i made of do i go for really confident movement abilities and like decent aim on controller or do i go for really strong aiming abilities and like eventually decent mobility and i realized even in the crucible I would rather have better mobility. I would rather be able to control my movement that much more precisely and just familiar. Like it's so much more expressive and detailed. And I kind of realized like maybe that's saying something about destiny. And like, we talk about positioning on this show all the time and just sort of like movement skills and your engagements. And I realized like, huh, that is sort of a testament to that, that I do better with significantly not as good of aim, just being able to get myself to the right place, taking the right route a little bit faster, a little bit smoother, a little bit, you know, safer and slidier and jukier and lower to the ground. And yeah, I guess that's where I fall on that side of the trade. Well, there you have it, folks. Crucible Radio can't be elitist because we're all using controllers (laughs) on PC. Uh, I am definitely trying to give myself... Uh, the the proper time to just adjust and see if I can do it. Uh, I see it as a personal challenge, something to work towards and something to improve upon. Uh, I'm not going to go so full, so full force mouse and keyboard uh, that I don't pick up my scuff, which I've been playing with fairly consistently. Uh, but I, I've, I've switched back and forth, and and it's so nice. Um, but in the interest of of providing some helpful tips on this show and also uh, keeping up with our theme since day one is to get better alongside uh, our my, our co-hosts and the listeners is I want to talk about my key mapping and I want to hear from listeners and, and what you guys are doing uh, because one thing I've noticed again new to PC gaming is how funny it is that this can be different for everyone and that's like very okay it, it depends on your setup it depends on your comfort it depends on your gear uh, and, and I can't go and tell you to use claw on a controller and have that be like great flat out good advice because it's just maybe not. Uh, but on on keyboard, we can talk about all these different things and all these different buttons. And I have made a lot of adjustments from the default settings. I, I want to hear about this because before I plugged my scuff in and just felt that that endorphin rush and said, oh boy, we're going to be sticking with this for a while. I did, <laughs> I, did, I did a lot of remapping. There was a lot of sort of things that seemed unintuitive to me. And I also wanted to take advantage of the, the side mouse buttons on the mouse to offload some of my movement in the same way that the, the back buttons on my cinch controller do the same. Um, oh, yeah. I want to hear what your setup was because I, I was happy with where I ended it up. I realized, okay, I'm starting at the bottom of like a new muscle memory curve. So it's going to be a while, but where I ended up with made sense to me. I'm curious to see where we overlap. Take it away. Well, you very much pointed out the most crucial part of this. And it's what Dr. Lupo told us when he gave us the full PC rundown, mm-hmm. which is give your right hand stuff to do as opposed to constantly flying around with your left. And to me that most uh, mirrors the controller, how I hold it. I'm never taking my finger off of the left joystick and the, the left trigger, right? Like those, those movements are not there. They're, they are locked in place. Whereas on my right hand, my thumb has all this work to do. 
with with the buttons and everything like that. The same cannot be said for the D-pad. So I'm trying to realize that like, oh, my right thumb is prepared to make a bunch of different mouse button clicks, whereas my left hand really likes to be (laughs) close to home base, basically that natural position. So I won't really go into like what the default settings because it's been too long. Uh, And also this is a work in progress, which is really fun because I'm practicing certain setups and I haven't quite fully gotten to my final my final form uh but with with the mouse and with so with with my left hand we've got wasd that's how you move around on computers uh i've learned that that's that's a good helpful one i'm not that dumb uh so i have sprint on shift and crouch on c and i think that's a very standard setup and uh we were we were talking about this and texas prod hates toggle functions more than he hates ketchup on fries which he hates condiments more than condiments in general so he does not like the toggle and i feel like i should maybe try out his style but i have it on toggle sprint and uh and dropping right down from d to c to slide is is not the worst part that's not the worst thing of trying to make my hands do it's okay that one was really frustrating for me because in the same way I don't like to take my thumb off of the sticks on controllers, I don't want to take my movement fingers off of WASD. And so yeah. to like reach down and to like have C be your right key so you're never going to be hitting right and crouch at the same time, which maybe doesn't come up, but maybe right after you finish a slide, you want to get out of out of the crouch and hit right. I guess slide animation. Okay, fine, fine. But like what happens if you're you're not toggled, right? So you're holding C to crouch down and you want to do a little, you want to waddle over to the right a little bit. Uh, that, <laughs> well, there's that, there's an argument for toggle, right? Is is toggle crouch move then untoggle rather than trying to press two buttons at once uh to move. So uh, yeah, that's that's a very work in progress um button for me, but it's all right. And then I have my my warlock rift on on caps and that one's uh, a weird reach for my pinky but i will take it over having to hold circle because it's just instant and that's cool because i hold circle a lot and you're like come on come on and it just goes and that's that's a nice feature so uh, i i i i i feel strongly that q and e mean something like they have they tend to be your like ability and ability. So for me, I moved, God, what I put grenade on E. I put class ability on Q. Like those make sense as like things that come up infrequently that you want to take your time and probably like trigger thoughtfully. And you're probably not going to be moving too much as you do them. That one, that would yeah, m- yeah. Made, made sense. Um, but okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Continue. Continue. Well, that's, that's a, that's actually a good, a good thing to try out because, you know, the uh, the class ability you're using sort of in the heat of battle, you're definitely throwing up a barrier while getting shot and you don't want to have to take an awkward stretch if it turns out that caps lock is a weird spot for your pinky. Uh, and where, whereas the interact, which is what I have on E, sort of happens in calmer moments. Yeah, you can stop and pick up power ammo and just press that button without aiming and sliding around at the same time. So that's actually a good argument. I think I might try that. But I have grenade on Q. Right up there, very sure. comfortable stretch for me. Yep, and uh, and space bar is jump, and I have the Logitech G502, beautiful mouse with lots of buttons, but I don't use all of them yet. That's a big work in progress for me. So, uh, aim and shoot is all standard, right? But then I've got two buttons near my thumb, and these are super, super comfortable to use. Like, like I really just sort of like change the pressure. I'm not lifting my thumb up at all. Uh-huh. They rest on these buttons. And it's super natural. So this one, and I, and this is where I think better players than me would, would maybe change their setup, but I got reload on that bottom thumb button because I reload a lot and it's real nice to not have to do anything, but just sort of lightly change the pressure on my thumb and reload. So that's just like a pure, just convenience for me. I'm like, what button do I press the most? It's reload, and I put that there. Okay. And then on the other one, on the forward mouse button, a little higher up, I have melee, and that to me, I'm I'm set. That makes that sense. That is that is a really strong position for melee uh, because you can 
do that spin, swing your mouse across the mouse pad, that 180 slap with the warlock and just melee. And it, it happens the fastest. And I think it requires some really fast reaction. I would venture to say that my melee timing is better on mouse than it is on a controller because <laughs> I whiff a lot of oh. melees on a controller or it's just too slow. I'm not, I never do it. I never decide to stop shooting in melee. Whereas in this one, I'm just like, now, now I can just press it. I don't have to take my finger off. Uh, so I think that's a really good move for me. There's two more buttons up here that I have yet to. I, I don't think you can do stuff with those buttons. Those from. No? <laughs> yeah. So I, I figured this out because I tried to to map these because I figure I'm just going to play D2 entirely with my mouse. Yeah. Um, those front two buttons. And if you click them, you'll see it changes the lights. Those change your DPI. Right. And that changes the lights there. And then that thumb button, the like the bottom thumb button, that. That, you don't get that one. That one does something too. I forget what that one does. And then there's the other <laughs> well, buttons beneath the scroll wheel, and they both do things too. The the scroll button bottom one changes my DPI. Like it definitely goes through the settings. Oh, and the three oh, lights are the three that, settings. That so one Logitech has a thing presets. that you can. Yeah, preset see. like DPI presets. But then the yeah. the front two are are like specifically just going through back and forth through the range of faster to slower DPIs. This is probably not relevant to people who don't also have Logitech <laughs> T502s. Yeah, but, no, um, you, you go go in. There's a Logitech uh, like application you download, yeah, and no, you can I go in that. and change all of that. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I guess you can't can't do all that. Um, I, I'm interested in these two thumb buttons because these were the these were the big ones for me. I figured first up. I will like, so what am I hitting the most and what is like a core movement ability? What do I want to put there? Uh, how about sprint? I'm always hitting the sprint button. And then I realized that pinky hitting shift for sprint is so completely ingrained in my brain that there is no changing that one. That, it's that, it's that, a natural setting too. Like you don't have to move your pinky to do right. it. So at Resting least you get like position. a designated finger for it. Yep. Now, Crouch, I uh, crouch was an obvious one. Crouch, I definitely wanted the controller. I put that one on the front button because that one makes sense to me. You've got it's a core movement ability. Your left hand is locked into the movement positions, and then you can just slide, 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 and have like w- like with melee, have slide be tied mm-hmm. to your look. Um, and then I think I also put I put melee on the back one. I don't know. I I, I thought a lot about it. And I did a lot of testing, and then I plugged in my controller and immediately forgot all of it. <laughs> um, but th- this is I, I just love this idea that like your that everyone is going to customize them, and everyone is basically going to set themselves up so no one can play with default settings anymore. Um, that instead you just like having a scuff controller will do to you or playing with bumper jumper or whatever, like your input mode is really custom fit, not just to what makes sense and sort of what your gear setup is, but also your play style and your movement style and what's, what's relevant. If you're like a very airborne player, maybe you, I don't know, maybe you do something like that on the mouse. Hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. My question to, to people too, about what they do uh, really pertains to what, uh, when, when I was bringing up these other, mouse buttons that who knows their potential yet. Uh, but I might have to make a decision coming up about what to do about, uh, my movement ability, IE, uh, rolling, which is way different. I think than just dropping a rift in my eyes or the air dodge from the Dawn blade perk tree. I haven't used either of those two things yet. I just haven't unlocked it as of recording this. So if it turns out something like that, really needs to be on my mouse. I might have to put reload back on the keyboard and, oh, uh, man. and make room for that, put for those movements because R. those have to be smooth. So I like I, R. It's such a reach. It's, it's not a reach. It is a video game standard, but also, also. <laughs> well, I'm not a standard video gamer. Bro, okay, well, fair enough. Pro tip. I, I'm I, actually so, going to leave my scuff plugged in and always hit square on that when I need to reload, but still play mouse and keyboard. So my scuff will just be on my lap and I'll just very quickly oh. reach down and hit square. I, I thought about doing the opposite. So having my scuff controller on and then just having instant class ability on a key. So just reach for the keyboard to pop that <laughs> instantly. Um, I'm glad that I'm space bar. We went to the, went to the same place with this. Um, no, I, I definitely have a thing I'm working on and this is more of a, this is more of a crucible thing because like, obviously when you're playing PV, just, just reload. Don't, don't run around with an empty gun. 
Uh, but I noticed Three. that in PvP, I have a bad habit because I am a compulsive reloader, and I am and and I see this in other players all the time, and I've started to abuse it when my opponents are doing it. That they reload before the fight is done, and that may I recommend is a fantastic time to shoot them. Um, I find myself <laughs> like shooting off like ten rounds of my forty six round auto rifle. And then reloading when really I've got enough bullets to completely end the engagement and not take myself out of the fight unless I want to sprint cancel it uh, to do a reload there. So I specifically didn't want to make reload any easier. I wanted to keep it on R. But additionally, I've um, I've been using Actium War Rig with double autos and have made a point of like never reloading unless I have to and just like letting it recharge a little bit, just running all of my guns down. And I think honestly, I think it's helped me. I think I've I've won some gunfights. You should unmap, reload, right? You just, while you have that set up and like train yourself. You just, you just can't. You have. I'm to just win. gonna map all of the buttons, <laughs> like all of the all of my keys to super. So I just slap my key <laughs> right. <real quick>. Yeah. <laughs> Launch. <laughs> oh, you need one of those like staples, uh, big red buttons that you hit. <laughs> super. That's time. actually hilarious. Just like mount it on your desk somewhere. Yeah, and then you have to yell boom and do like a big windmilling uh, swing. Or just wham, whammy, whammy. So the, the last thing that I'll, I'll weigh in on next week if I've made a decision is how the heck to switch to what gun I want. That right now is a mystery to me. Ah. I know that there's some coding to do. I know I can yep. do the numbers and I know I can hit this um, this accent button and use it like the regular triangle or, or Y setup. But boy, I just have not decided. I just... I just use one gun if I'm not comfortable. I got a pro tip for you right here. Um, and and I'm, I'm not positive about the last part, so someone correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but, of course, you have the ability to switch your guns with mouse wheel, which is nice. But it cycles yeah. through all three guns. And odds are you're probably not cycling through your to your power weapon as much as you're cycling through it. So somebody, um, and, and look it up on Reddit, um, somebody posted a way to make your mouse scroll only switch between your kinetic and your energy weapon. So you're just switching back and forth between those. And what I'm wondering, I hope you can do it. I assume you do it is that if you want to switch to your power weapon, you can click the mouse wheel and yeah, yeah. Or, or even a keyboard button for that. I find sure. this is, is okay. Yeah. As long as I know I'm not accidentally going past a weapon when I'm trying to scroll or something like that. So I, I might have to delve in and, and mess with that stuff. That's a, a, a great little fix for people who just know that that's, that's what they want. W- worth pointing out. Um, if you've ever thought, man, I would like to map the same button to two things or um, mess with my mouse wheel or just like these things that seem not quite straightforward, how to do in the interface, just go look on Reddit all of the files that can control your controls are all just like text files installed somewhere and you can just go in and paste in this thing that magically makes it work. Uh, so know that you have options and you can reset if you end up breaking everything. Well, PC guys, pretty sweet, right? PC, pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm sure going forward, we'll have some insights into PC uh, a little bit specifically because there was a little bit of stuff that I saw that people were like, ooh, this feels a little bit better on PC than it did on console. Or, you know, the, the meta might not be that different, but there's definitely going to be some guns that people are like, oh, this is just, you know, way easier when you don't have to manage recoil. Yeah, that was that that was my first impression of just that that first homecoming mission was playing with mouse and keyboard and just like, hip firing an auto or or a sidearm for that matter and going like oh this this works a little bit differently i i would not be surprised to see if a different meta emerges but i'm still just gonna use all viced guns guys viced guns are the best guns sand wasp black scorpion I don't know the other ones, guys. They're so they're so good, and they're they they hold such interesting places in the gun balance arrangement. Black Scorpion archetype, fastest time to kill in scout rifles if you hit all headshots. Slowest if you miss. Uh, the autos, the the high rate of fire autos, exact opposite. One of the slowest headshot times to kills, but the fastest body shot times to kills. I can't wait to talk with Noosk about this. I'm oh. 
I just like they they reload so fast. They're so pretty. Look like, great with shaders. <laughs> as soon as I got my sand wasp, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be fine on this this new PC grind. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, maybe next week I'll have a sense of what I'm supposed to be clicking and at what time. And uh, and maybe I'll actually be comfortable doing a few games on mouse and keyboard. Or, you know, the controllers are still good. And I think one of the coolest things about Destiny 2 on PC is that we are at a level where controller calibration, whatever you want to call it, is is so smooth now. And it's not an issue. And I think it allows a lot of uh, gamers to just sort of feel like, yeah, I could I could play on that if I wanted to. And I think that's pretty dope. And uh, it's fun. Yeah. I, there's so much, like if you're new to Destiny, there's so much new stuff to learn. Like how about not adding a whole new input scheme that you're not comfortable with to that list unless you want to. Yeah. Learn the <laughs> game first. Learn its core mechanics. Learn the rules. Learn the flow of things and stuff. And then ease yourself into it like I'm trying to do. It's pretty cool that I can do that. Like an old man into a warm bath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, and keep grinding if you're still on console because you guys have the head start and got some trials to win coming up soon. Finally, again, that's gonna be great. <sighs> Does that do it? D two PC episode. P P C the P V P C episode. That's a good one. I'm running right. out of steam. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's, <laughs> right, let's, let's this throw down. some plugs here at the end. Um, join the Discord. Discord.gg slash Crucible Radio. We're all over there. If you want to join one of our faction clans, uh, head on over to the main Discord. There's links and announcements on how to join the specific clans. You got choices. You can join the good one or the bad one or the other bad one. Oh, God. Some disagreement over how that breaks down, but we can all agree <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> and uh, this is specifically asked people on Xbox. We are looking for more Xbox clan members across the board because people are looking for games. They're looking for friends and it's a good place to find some really awesome people with like-minded uh, you know, focuses in the crucible or whatever you want to do in destiny. Very true. Um, listen to odd folks. They got a new EP out and a new music video. It's dope. They're one of my favorite bands to ever come through this podcast. Listen to wildcats. My band. We're good. Bandcap.com slash wildcats with a K and a T and a Z and a Y. I, I, it, 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 you should have just spelled it scattered that throughout <laughs> there. Yeah, just you, figure it out. You'll figure it out. Sound Welcome it out. Catsville. Um, I, I, I think it's probably safe to say that there is uh, Odd Folks music playing under this right now. Uh, so <laughs> if you like this, you're in, you're, you're in good hands. Um, go check them out. Uh, can I, can I do the plugs right now? Recorded in one bit. Uh, sure. Yeah. Go to uh, go check them out, you ding dongs. It's facebook.com slash odd folks. And oh, they're just so good. We saw them live. They're so nice and they play Destiny. I would not be surprised if we play them more. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, oh, we're just going to gonna be playing them continuously. From here on. Hey, um, and hey, it's, it's a fun, spooky Halloween episode. Are you guys doing costumes? You guys dressing up this year? I think uh, I am. I, I might so. use my. my uh, Commander Cody helmet to give out candy. Yeah, but that's right. probably the extent of it. Mrs. Bird's kind of surprised me and was like, hey, there's this crazy party going on. Like, Let's go to that. And I'm like, that's not normally her deal. And I'm like, okay. But then I realized, oh my god, I gotta put together a Halloween costume. Can I just be like three hole punch jam or something? Like, what, what's the little <laughs> least I can get away with on this? Just dress normally and just say, I, I am work from home, man. Ew. Don't do that, birds. Don't be work from home, man. Um, I or, mean, it's this just sweatpants and a t-shirt. This was a, a very <laughs> successful costume I had when you were in high school. Just put on, put a blanket around you and go as comfy. Uh, I tried What's that once. What's the definition of successful in this case? <laughs> successful as in convenient for you? Unclear. Um, no comment. Yeah. Um, me and Miss Bones, are. Uh, she's going to be a butterfly and I'm going to be a bug catcher. Oh, that's pretty good. I thought you were I'm on the hunt for a giant net. What's the uh, Pokemon 
version of that. Uh, oh no, it's Bug Catcher Trainers, and it's definitely my inspiration. Hers is just standard Bug and Catcher. Mine is definitely Pokemon related. Uh, because what I also wanted to do was have uh, I was gonna dress up as Trainer Joey and wear comfy shorts, and that she would be Ratata, but she didn't want to be Ratata. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to be Ratata. Uh, yeah, I'm a cool trainer at heart. Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Halloween. Magic. <laughs> can, can we take a quick break to be right continued. here? I got a piece so badly. Oh my god! Just, Shh, just, we're almost. Yeah, that's it. Almost done. Just I'm. I'm gonna bust. Two minutes. One minute. <laughs> Sick. <Okay. laughs> can Can you clip that, Andrew? <laughs> I'm gonna bust. <laughs> Hello everyone, Swain here. You know that Crucible Radio is your source for all things Destiny PvP, and I know you want more than just this video, so make sure to head on over to crucibleradio.com to find all of our past episodes, detailed Crucible maps, t-shirts, and much, much more.